over three billion years ago, life first appeared in the sea of an ancient ocean. Over 400 million years ago, living creatures left the protected waters to begin life on land. About two million years ago, the earliest man walked upright on the land. 204 years ago, James Watt made improvements to the steam engine and began the age of technology, forever altering the course of man. 66 years ago, two men named Wright again changed the pattern of life on this planet. Today, men first left the protective atmosphere of Earth to walk in the vacuum of the moon. And you may wonder, will our lives ever be the same? Will future generations look back from Earth, from another planet, from another star, and say, this was the beginning? Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edwin Buzz Alden. Three men to represent the culmination of a dream and the beginning of a new concept of reality. through the atmosphere toward the open vacuum, a trip not only through space, but through time, toward a world untouched by the evolutionary processes of Earth, a journey that was to be a door to the future and a window on the past. Now in Earth orbit, it was time for translunar injection. The start of the trip out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go.
burn completed, on their way to the moon. The next step was to jettison their launch vehicle, turn around and dock with the lunar module, still attached to the third stage. free now of the useless third stage, they continue their coasting flight. So they coasted toward the moon. As Jason sought the golden fleet to regain the kingdom, these three sought a cargo of knowledge to gain a kingdom for all men, a kingdom of infinite frontier. Then, on July 19, 1969, Apollo 11 prepared for LOI, Lunar Orbit Insertion. 11, this is Houston, and you are go for LOI, over. Roger, go for LOI. And we've had lots of signal at Apollo Now, those of us on the Earth waited for the radio signal to be acquired as Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin emerged from their first transit behind the moon. Day, July 20th, marked the beginning of a new era. Mike Collins, alone in the command module called Columbia, watched as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin undocked the lunar module called Eagle. As the Eagle rotated slowly, Collins inspected it carefully. For now, it was time for the descent to the surface of the moon and into history. Separation maneuver had placed the command module below the Eagle, so that half an orbit later, there would be a safe clearance for DOI, Descent Orbit Insertion. Armstrong and Aldrin looked down at Columbia as they passed over the landing site. Again, Eagle and Columbia passed behind the moon. When they emerged, Eagle would be on the way down, awaiting the signal that would begin the powered descent and end with man's first lunar landing.
50,000 feet above the mean. Eagle's descent engine ignited and began the deceleration for landing. As they descended, Armstrong and Aldrin watched the craters and mountains of the moon pass beneath them. At this point, the Eagle rolled onto its back to give the landing radar surface acquisition. Now the crew was flying blind, hurtling toward the lunar surface, only their instruments and the voice of mission control telling them where they were, until the slow pitch maneuver brought the lunar horizon to their view. And to Mike Collins, alone in the orbit in Columbia. Eagle is in tranquility, over. Yeah, I heard your whole thing. Well, good show. In tranquility, uh, be advised there are lots of smiling faces in this room and all over the world, over. There are two of them up here. Rod, that was a beautiful job, you guys. And don't forget one in the command module. Rod. Now in the lesser gravity of the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin donned their equipment and prepared to explore this dark, lonely world. Guided by Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong and his bulky suit worked his way through the Eagle's forward hatch.
Tom Shaw next set about taking pictures and collecting a contingency sample of lunar soil. Then it was time for all of them to join him. Then the first man on the moon read a plaque attached to a leg of the eagle. A plaque representing the philosophy of a nation that itself, less than two centuries earlier, had been thought by many so-called practical men an impractical dream. As we watch them plant the flag of the United States in the lunar soil, we perhaps wonder what dream dreamt today by what impractical dreamer will be tomorrow's reality. Now Buzz Aldrin developed a choreography for future lunar explorers. The steps with which those who follow will traverse the moon. Thank you. 
As Armstrong and Aldrin set about the business of collecting samples and setting up experiments, Earth observed them. Hard rates on both crewmen and averaging uh, between 90 and 100. The flight surgeon reports they're in great shape. Watching their loping, skating strides, it was as though we peered through a lens that distorted time itself. they went about their tasks of exploration, aliens on a distant world. And, strangely enough, they looked as if they belonged there. time to leave the dusty lunar plane, show the experiments, samples, and photographs to be returned to Earth. Next, get us in the now useless equipment, clean house in the Eagle, and rest for the next day's liftoff and rendezvous. the ascent engine would push the eagle into orbit. For this one maneuver, this engine would have to work. There was no alternative. We listened to the countdown from the moon. Our guidance recommendation uh, is things, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. So they departed Tranquility Base, pushed toward orbit by the ascent engine, up and away for man's first firm extraterrestrial foothold across the harsh, pitted landscape of the moon. Following rendezvous procedures developed through Gemini and Apollo, Eagle drew nearer and nearer to Columbia.
Alone in Colombia, Mike Collins watched the eagles climb, the flashing beacon of friendly signals. For hours, he had kept his vigil. Now his companions were returning. Control thrusters firing, Eagle and Columbia moved together for docking, the last movement of their lunar duet. After the docking, the transfer of the two and their precious samples of the moon to Columbia, the ascent stage of the Eagle was jettisoned. It was time for the final burn in lunar orbit, trans-Earth injection. TEI. Again, we waited. Waited for Apollo 11 to emerge from behind the moon. Coming home. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, how did it go? Over. Don't open up the LRL doors, Charlie. Roger, we got you coming home. On the way home. Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Then, on July 24th, the crew of Apollo 11 witnessed the final sunset over Earth's horizon and prepared for entry. Uh, you're clear for landing. Task is down and locked. See you later. the three men wearing biological isolation garments enter the mobile quarantine facility and their earthly confinement. out for the moon, man had touched his destiny. But to obtain that destiny, he must take firm hold of that which he now only touched, then reach again. For these men, the first, were only the first.
Earth exists as a warm, colorful sanctuary in the airless black of space. But in our planetary system, Earth is the anomaly, the strange environment. And now it is time. Time for man to break free of his provincial planet, to expand physically and mentally into the future, into the universe, into reality. And this was the beginning.